Hey, whiskey fans. A lot of families pass their businesses and their passions from generation to generation, but that seems especially true in the world of whiskey. Today, we're joined by Fred No and his son, Freddie No, distillers at Jim Beam. So guys, how many generations has your family been distilling at Jim Beam? Freddie's the eighth. Eighth generation. And Freddie, was it sort of assumed that you would go into this job, or did you ever consider any other positions? You know, I wouldn't really say that it was assumed. You know, I never really got, got asked or even pressured at all from, from dad or granddaddy growing up. You know, I'd, when I would go to the distillery with them, it was just fun. You know, they never really said, hey, do you want to go in the business? And actually, every time granddaddy asked me, you know, what do you want to do when you grow up? I always told him I wanted to be a lawyer. So I was probably 18 or 19 years old when I really finally decided that I wanted to kind of come into the family business. And so, Fred, you didn't really push him in any way? No, you couldn't push him. I mean, he was a, a free spirit, uh, much like me, and it was kind of had to be his own decision. And that was kind of Dad's way of me. It has to be your own call because it's, you know, it's got to come from your heart. You can't force anybody into this lifestyle we live. It's, it's got to be in you, and that's what you want to do. You see, it's got to be in you. Do you think there is some uh, ability that's inherited? You know, you guys have not just the training, but also the palate. Is there something that you think is passed down through generations? I think it's, uh, yeah, there's some of that. And I think where you live, like being around my dad all those years, he kind of trained me, but I didn't know it at the time, smelling stuff when I was younger. It's not letting me taste, but smell is. What do you think? Can you see something different about which one of these smells different? At the time, I didn't know. He was just seeing if my nose would, I could pick up you know, mustiness in whiskey or, or things that were lost. I was just doing what he said to do. Here, smell this. What do you think? Smell good or bad? And that was his way of training him around the distillery. I followed him around like a little little dog, you know, and, and you know, he was telling me, you know, here's this pump does this, this pump does that, we do this. But I was just inquisitive enough to wonder, but almost like Freddie, it all ended up at the lake fishing before we went home. And, you know, the look, the hook, was to go fishing in his favorite fishing spot. And that was what drew me. But while I was there, you know, hanging out, riding in the trucks and trains, and it was a great playground for a little boy. So he, he sort of tricked you into learning the business. A little bit, a little bit. bit. Yeah. But he always, he kept saying, don't bank on this being here. Do something else. You know, he pushed me, and he also put uh, getting out of college. If I didn't finish college, he wouldn't let me come to work. I mean, Booker was a real legend, as, as, as you are now as well. Um, what, what was the best piece of advice, whiskey, fishing, whatever, that he gave you over the years? Oh, just tell the truth, be honest, treat people like you want to be treated yourself, and, you know, just, you know, just be yourself. Don't let people tell you what to say. You know, don't let the marketing people put words in your mouth. Tell the story the way it is and let it go. He was a straight shooter. Oh, that's absolutely. For sure. <laughs> absolutely. That's well, an understatement of the day. He was well, a straight shooter. Well, and Freddie, you were, you were very close with, with your granddad oh, yeah, as well. Um, how, about, how about you? What's the, the advice know, that you took either from, I don't know if Fred ever gave you any good advice or not. Maybe you want to jump right to your I'm granddad. Saying, you know, but. He gave me that same advice, you know, and it, it, when he was growing up and granddad had given him that advice, there was no social media. You know, it was a lot different time. So him giving me that advice, you know, it, it holds a bigger standard now. You know, if I say something, anybody can Google it, and if it's wrong, you know, can call me on it right then. So it's always about being honest and being true to yourself, and and you know, just being transparent with everybody on our products and our, you know, our processes and everything that we, you know, we share. You know, as far as with Granddaddy, the, some of the advice he gave me, he just always told me to do something that makes you happy. You know, you live a long life and. You work a lot of that time frame, so just make sure no matter what you're doing, it's something you like. You know, that's why when I would say you want to be a lawyer, he'd say, you know, good luck, you know. <laughs> <laughs> and so uh, th this whiskey that, that you created, Little Book, that's sort of a, a tribute to your granddad in a way, too. Can you tell us a little bit of the story of the, of the name and, and yeah, your relationship with him? You know, growing up, he always called me Little Book or Bookie or, or Book. And um, you know, I was always with him. He retired from production in 92, and I was born in, in 87, so I was five. So, you know, when I was out of school every summer, living right next door to your grandpa, you know, he becomes your best friend very quickly. He always wanted to watch me play basketball in the backyard or throw me football passes or, 
or whatever. So it was, you know, fitting that my first product bear the name that, that he gave me. And, you know, in, in a lot of ways, it does resemble Booker's. You know, it's uncut, unfiltered like Booker's. Uh, same same bottle, close to the same design. So I think it's very fitting that as close as we were that my first product, you know, kind of followed in his footsteps. Yeah, I mean, it, it, it clearly, you know, the uncut, unfiltered, and the, and the beauty and intensity of it, um, I, I'm, I'm sure Booker would be very proud of it. At the same time, it's also a pretty innovative whiskey. Not like, it's not, you know, it's not a, it's not a bourbon, it's not like something you guys have normally done. What, what did you think when you first heard about this, Fred, and, and the path that he was taking? It's not really a typical Jim Beam. Do you guys ever disagree on, on Do we ever disagree? The future? Yeah, disagree <laughs> on the future. <laughs> you know, he follows his sons and haven't disagreed on that. But, no, I mean, he was going down a path on his own, and he's a free spirit. And I got no problem with him doing whatever he wants to do. Booker was the same way with me. You just do what you want to do. I mean, Fred Dad was, I'd say, more opinionated than I was. I am. Uh, you know, I encouraged Freddie to do whatever he wants to do. When he said he was going to do this, I knew that it would be good because, you know, he's, he wasn't going to put something out he wouldn't drink himself. And that's kind of the best advice I could give him was make sure it's something you're proud of that you want to put your name on. And if, after he does that, he'll be fine. Are, are you proud of what Freddie's doing there? Absolutely. I mean, he's uh, he's taking the bit rather well back home in Kentucky, the horse racing country. You know, when the horse picks up the bit and runs with it, that's when you're, if you're a horse owner, you're proud. He's picked up the bit really well at the distillery, and he's pretty much running the distilleries and, uh, you know, protecting our yeast and creating products. And the employees that work with him love working with him. They see a lot of Booker in him, so it's kind of cool to – hear the, the positive comments of everybody that works around him every day so it's a uh, we're in good hands what, what do you think Booker would say about this whiskey oh he would, he would be probably more proud than me because you know, he could do no wrong in Booker's eyes <laughs> he's the grandson I mean this is like his daughter you know, the granddaughter she can do no wrong in my eyes I mean he would say nothing but I'm sure he would enjoy it because it's good tasting whiskey and you know the key to that was he's done what he wanted he did his homework he did a good job and he made sure that it was something he was proud of, and I'm sure Dad would have been very proud of what his grandson did. I think we all agree it's a it's a pretty great whiskey. It's very tasty. Do you guys work closely side to side? Or, yeah. Oh yeah, definitely. You know, if even if he's on the road and I'm back at the plant, you know, we're talking at least every other day, if not every day, a lot of times, whether it be via text or calling each other on the phone. You know, I'm always trying to keep him in the loop of everything we're doing at the plant when he's not there. And then when we are there together, we usually eat lunch together quite often. So uh, even if we're not, you know, working side by side, we're definitely, I've got a, a, a thumb on what he's doing. He's got a thumb on what I'm doing. So it's, it's good, you know, for me to be able to follow in his footsteps and to be able to, to follow closely with his work, you know, whether he's out on the road and, and just uh, know what he's, what he's up to and, and what he's talking about. And, you know, any tough questions he's getting, you know, he always shares, you know, his answers with me just to kind of help hone my skills of, of speaking. And so it's really, really great to be able to have that good working relationship. And I, is, is it true when, you know, I was at the, the Little Book launch event here in New York, which was just great. It was the first time I tasted it. We had the components. It was a great tasting. It, was that actually your sort of first speaking debut, you said? Really, it really was for, for media folks and, and anyone outside of the company. You know, a couple of weeks before that, I had presented it to some of our internal a uh, luxury specialist and that was really the first time that I had done it uh, doing a presentation kind of by myself you know he was there with me answering some questions but for the most part it was, it was the first time that I had led something so it's a natural huh oh yeah it was, a, it, uh, it, was a, it was a great event I guess when you're passionate about it, it that's uh, exactly right wrong. yeah exactly. I mean if it's what you're talking about is something is your passion you're telling the straight story it's not a problem you just got to tell the story stand up there and tell it like it is Freddie has no problem telling the story, much like me or Booker. I mean, he, he likes talking. He's got no problem <laughs> telling the story, which is good. I mean, that's that's part of our, our business. I mean, you go on the road and you sell what you make. You have to tell the story because, you know, the story behind the products is what makes them. I mean, you know, the, the family ties and, you know, how did you come up with this? You know, and being able to sit and look somebody in the eye and tell them, hey, this is how I made it. And then when they taste it, they go, wow, that's pretty cool. I mean, the first presentation he did, one of our specialists 
said, you really did this? You know, like, like <laughs> questioning his ability. I mean, this is somebody who works for the company. I thought, wow, you better watch what you're saying. You might be working for him someday. <laughs> but it's, it's kind of funny to watch people's reaction because, you know, a lot of folks in the industry have watched, watched Freddie grow up. I mean, he was little Freddie for years and years and years. I don't see many people call him little Freddie anymore. <laughs> he's, he's big Freddie now. But it is kind of funny to because a lot of our sales guys have watched him from the time he was a little boy, because when they would come to our house for dinners, he'd be throwing the football with them, or basketball, or baseball, or whatever kind of sport where they could be. And, you know, and he was knee high to them. And now all of a sudden, he's looking down on some of these guys. I said, now you're going to say about him what you said when he was a little guy. No, 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 we're not going to mess with him. <laughs> It, do you think it's easier to tell the story because you guys do have a family story? You know, your story is not, uh, I sent my resume, they called me, I came in. You know, it's nothing like a typical career story. Do you think having a family story, uh, you know, gives you a, a something I, I new to tell? So. You know, you know, even though when I was younger, I didn't, it didn't taste the liquids, but going to the tastings with him, you know, I, first time I traveled with him, I think I was 15. I went to Miami. I, I like the University of Miami. And I said I wanted to go to college there. So he's like, I'm going to Miami. Why don't you come with me? But it was very good to go with him and just, uh, you know, hear him do a tasting, you know, with the small batch products and to hear his stories and his perspective on it. And, you know, as I got older, I, you know, my mom even says it when people ask her, like, you know, did he, you know, he had an eye for this. And she even says, you know, growing up, I watched him. He listened to his grandfather speak, you know, at a young age. And I did, you know, every time either one of them was speaking, I had my full attention on them just because I wanted to hear their perspective on these products and develop my own, you know, my, my own thoughts on it and know that, you know, coming from, from the makers, it, it's, it's very easy to get out there and tell stories for products that you're passionate about and, and a lot of times products that my grandfather created or something that he's worked on or even, you know, like Jim Beam, my great-great-grandfather, you know, it's, gr it's great for me to be able to kind of continue on that family legacy. And, you know, uh, one of my teachers had told me, as long as you keep talking about someone after they pass away, their legacy never dies. So, you know, eight generations we've got, you know, and, and he hasn't passed away, but, you know, the legacy will continue as long as I can continue talking about all of them. Well, now, speaking of that, you, you have a daughter, right? That's correct. And how, how old is she? She's eight. My daughter turned eight today. All right. In fact, well, yeah, so. Um, <laughs> have to tell her happy birthday. Yeah, we'll, we'll do, yeah. <laughs> Good <but>. luck to you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I hear it's only going to get harder. It but does. It does. <laughs> I believe she's so. eight going on 18. <laughs> yeah. So you have, a, so you have an eight-year-old daughter. I, to my knowledge, there hasn't been a, uh, a female distiller, Jim Beam. Do you, do you have interest in... Uh, your daughter you know, learning the business and continuing a legacy? She, you know, from time to time asks me questions because she, same as I did, you know, comes and listens to me and dad talk and she'll ask questions about who Jim Beam is or, you know, how come, she calls, she says, granddaddy's famous. I've seen him on, on the internet. It's funny. <laughs> but, you know, I'm, I'm not going to pressure her into doing it. And once again, it's one of those things, you know, if she wants to do it, then that's great. If she doesn't, then I want her to do something that makes her happy. And same deal, you know, it's, she's got the same, she likes to fish, so so we take her to the distillery and she... Using the same hook. <laughs> it's, it's the same, yeah. <laughs> same play, so... We'll reel her in, we'll see. You know, hopefully, you know, as long as, she, as long as she's interested in it, then I would love for her, you know, because I, I enjoy working with him so much, you know, being able to work with her would be would be great as well. It'd be really cool. Yeah, my, my daughter laid the guilt trip on me today. <laughs> when, I was leave, when I was leaving a few days ago, she goes... You're not gonna be there on my birthday. You like whiskey more than you like me. <laughs> I'm like, oh, you really know how to get to you know how to get to your dad. You have to take a good present home because I'm really nice. Take a real nice uh, she, present. She came to the city with her mom, so they're running around. I might see her for a little bit. There you go. What's one of the most important lessons that you learned from Booker? Oh, I'd say growing up, the big thing was to be honest. He, when I was a little guy, if I did something and he asked me and I denied it and he knew I did it, I got a worse spanking for the telling the lie than uh, what I did and what I did. So he, he got that he got that point across at an early age. To be honest, he could put up with a lot of stuff, but lying wasn't one of them. And, uh, but to be honest and to treat people like you'd want to be treated yourself was always his, his way of life. I mean, I don't think dad ever met a stranger. If you watched him <laughs> at work or out on the road, uh, he had time for every person who came to an event. They would line up 
at the end of a tasting, and he wouldn't. They might have a dinner planned. The sales team would have a dinner planned at a certain restaurant at a certain time. If there were still people waiting to talk to my father, tell him a story, take a picture, do whatever, he would not leave. He'd say, y'all going to dinner, I'll catch up with you later. But he wanted to make sure that if somebody gave their time and came to an event, that he had time to sit there and say hello, listen to their story about what they appreciated about the bourbons, whether it was a good, bad, or indifferent. And he had a story about for everybody that came. So it was a, just being yourself and treating people nice. Uh, he was just a, a generous spirit, you know. Uh, oh, yeah. He wasn't going to yeah. let anyone walk away without a smile. Oh yeah, he had a, he had a good he had a good ride. There's no doubt. That's exactly right. You know, that's kind of the same thing. Uh, you know, that time I was with with Dad in Miami, my first trip with him. You know, I was sitting there. I was 15. I, I said 15 or 16. It was about 9:30 at night. We hadn't had dinner. You know, I was starving. I was like, "Come on, let's go, eat, let's go, let's go eat." You know, and. But he literally, I, I watched, I guarantee you, 200 people came up asking him to sign a bottle or just to tell a story about meeting granddaddy. And, you know, at such a young age seeing that, obviously I was kind of upset when we weren't going to dinner. But <laughs> but to see that he took the time, and, you know, now looking back on it, it's the same thing, you know, taking the time to shake each hand. And, you know, because if, if it wasn't for the consumers, we couldn't do what we do, you know, making whiskey. It wouldn't be what it is if it wasn't for everyone that consumed it. So taking the time to listen to those stories and, you know, relive those moments with them, it, it's great inside. And then also, you know, it helps build the relationship to, to keep, keep those consumers drinking Jim Beam or, or any of our products. It's neat that that, um, that attitude is something that's been passed down through generations, too. You know, as a dad, you know, kids don't do, <laughs> kids don't do what you say. No, no, they, do what, they do what they see you do. Exactly. So that's really exactly. the way to pass it down, yeah. Right. Exactly right. But you can't tell them. you got to show them. If they don't see you doing it, they're not going to do it. You know, we talked about your granddaddy, Booker, a lot. He passed away 13 years ago now? 13 years, yep. Yeah. Mm -hmm. what, what would you say to him today if you could talk oh, to I, him again? I would just, just say, are, are we doing okay? You know, are you still proud of us? Because I know he was very proud, you know, towards the end, you know, with what I was doing. He said, you're doing good, boy. Just... Keep doing it. You're doing great. And then I'd love for him to be able to see what Freddie's done. Because I know he's very proud of him as a little guy. And you know, I'm sure he's looking down on us right now saying, Hush, you've said enough. <laughs> but get a little tore up when you talk about him. Yeah. To well, me, you know, I think it would be just thank you. You know, like Dad said, he gave me a lot of life lessons that uh, at the time I was just like, what the hell is he doing asking me this, you know, or, or why am I doing this? But now looking back as I've grown up, you know, he was on, he was preparing me for the rest of my life at a young age. And, you know, so I, I would just say thank you. And it's kind of funny you ask that because the other day we had an innovation meeting and to kind of kick it off, everybody said, you know, if you could have a drink with someone living or dead, you know, who would you choose? And as soon as they asked it, I literally, that's, he's the only one that I, big time that I would want to have a drink with, you know, because he passed away before I was 21 and I never got to share a drink with him. So definitely be very cool for me to have that opportunity. Wow. Well, thanks for sharing that. I mean, I, I know uh, we do a lot of talking about the liquid and, and the bourbon, but we're also really interested in your family story. And there's a lot of admiration for Booker and for Fred and now for what you're doing. So uh, you. we appreciate you sharing those personal stories with us. So thanks, thanks guys. Very much. All right. Cheers. Cheers. cheers.